The title of this talk is Thrift Shopping with Your Data. I'm Josh Franz, a security, or senior security consultant with Rapid7. Rapid7, yes, the security product company, best in the world, totally subject or objective opinion of mine. Um, and this is Thrift Shopping with Your Data. So again, who am I? Senior security consultant. Um, I work with companies, large, small, medium, all types. Um, vulnerability management, um, general security consulting and best practices. Um, some of my hobbies include, and if you haven't noticed by the picture and the slide, I do have a very terrible sense of humor that I like to inject in everything I do. Um, I chase my four-year-old son around. It's a fun time. We have a dog who chases my son, who then I chase as well. Um, I collect a lot of useless technology. If you see my basement, I have tons of servers, switches, anything you can think of that's old and useless I have in my basement. Um, making jokes in very, ser very serious situations. My boss loves me for that. I lighten up a room even during a crisis, which if you're a consultant, happen every day of your life. Um, so that is another great thing about myself. Why I decided to do research about this, it's actually pretty funny. Like, I just basically got the idea because a family member was like, hey, I have a laptop that I'm going to donate because I think it's the right thing to do, which it totally is. We totally should be recycling more and also um, making sure that people who otherwise wouldn't have the ability to afford technology should be able to get it. Um, and they asked me, should I wipe my stuff? And I'm like, well, yeah, like, I don't want to give this to somebody else and they have all my data, right? So I wanted to learn more about the process behind, like, if I drop my stuff off, like, do they really wipe it? Like, everybody in this room could probably tell you they probably don't, right? Between a lazy employee, like, uh, or just the policy doesn't exist to wipe technology when it's donated, it probably doesn't exist. Um, and I haven't seen a ton of research on this, to be honest. Like, after this talk, people were linking me, and this blew up, and we'll get to this, but kind of blew up. Um, I didn't really see much research on this, um, so it's kind of funny um, to do this. And then if you are a security researcher, I do apologize in advance. Like I'm doing this like meme shit on the stage and like you do a serious job every day. Um, but I wanted to help educate people and that's kind of how I ter like pick my research topics is all of you guys can use Google, right? Like you can use the internet to search for the stuff you want to find. Um, but like my sister who asked me about, sorry, asked me about the laptop, um, she didn't know anything about Google. So she really couldn't look into it. And then, just a kind of funny aside, you don't know who this guy is, he's from like a pawn shop um, show on like a reality television channel or something, um, Pawn Stars, where he gives people like just really shitty deals on stuff all the time, change for a dollar 25 cents is the best I can do. Um, where I kind of went with this research, I, I paid up everything, uh, 31 businesses in total, I bought stuff from pawn shops, obviously um, because of like disclosure laws in my company, firing me if I tell you. Um, I can't get into spe specifics of where I went, but think like pawn shops, and it's all around Wisconsin, so you know, if you live in Wisconsin, you kind of guess. Um, but pawn shops, retail, or like thrift stores, secondhand shops, things where you can pick up like refurbished technology, this is where I went. And pawn shops, really funny story, I, I called a pawn shop because what I was doing is, my fiance and son, who I would drag along with this stuff, and they were like get super bored because we're driving around buying old, dusted, decrepit, Technology. My fiance's like, don't you have enough of this stuff in the basement? Why do you need it more? You know. I'm like, well, babe, I'm doing this for research. Like, I could be a millionaire off this. You know, lying to her. Obviously, I'm not going to be a millionaire. Um, but I called the pawn shop and I said, hey, man, like, do you have any like old computers sitting around? He's like, I got five of them. I've been sitting here for six months. Nobody will buy them. You give me twenty bucks for them. It's good. I'm like, all right, cool, twenty bucks. So let's do it. Um, so after doing that, I won't bore you um, with the specifics of the road trips and everything like that. Um, 600 bucks, gone. I got 41 desktops or laptops, you know, just like Windows. No one that did refurbished their stuff was using Linux, which made me sad. Um, removable media, so just think like flash drives, memory drives, um, some like floppy stuff. I wasn't around when floppy was like prevalent, so I didn't know what to do with that stuff anyway. Um, and then like hard disks, just like straight up hard drives that I found at like, you know, thrift stores and stuff. And then cell phones actually, I found six of them, um, most, or four of them were flip phones. I had to get the chargers on eBay, um, some of the laptops to power them on. Um, I, I took the hard drives out of the laptop, so I just wanted to see like, is this thing going to power on? All of them did. It was pretty funny. I had to spend some money to get the chargers because like the old Dells, I just couldn't, like I didn't have in my waste zone of my command center that I call my basement. 
Um, I didn't have like any of the chargers that I needed to power this stuff on, so it was actually pretty funny I had to buy them on eBay. But yeah, this is kind of like the final tally. <coughs> and then tool you, tools used for data extraction, you'll see, um, using my cool remote, um, this is a what I called a hard disk toaster. So I would like plug in the IDE drives there. Um, I you know use some Windows PowerShell, um, which is my go-to language when I can only use Windows and I want to be miserable. And then you can see this is a Python up here. I use Python, but I wanted to be funny and use a picture of an actual Python. It's multiple Pythons. And then like I had to order the chargers on eBay, so you could see like the chargers. I use my you know God-given hands. Um, and then I also this is I don't know if you guys are like a Marvel fan or Avengers fan. But it's a Tesseract. I use the Tesseract um, OCR library. Um, I actually used, um, and I'll get more into that, but it's pretty cool stuff. And then this is a live look right now of my command center. Um, I cleaned up all the Dorito bags and Mountain Dew cans, but you can see that the rest of my stuff is intact. Um, not an actual live look, because, I mean, it's just a slideshow, but get the picture. Um, less sexy than you probably think, and you're probably thinking it's not so sexy anyway, but it definitely wasn't. Um, it was basically get a computer, open it up, take out the hard drive, plug it in my toaster, um, and a script automatically ran. Like, you know, I just used like a Windows virtual machine, and as soon as like um, device manager updated, the script would run, and we would like get all the data and organize it. Um, same thing with IDE drives or SATA drives. It was the same thing. Um, desktops and laptops were plugged in like normal because, like I said, I wanted to do it like what I consider the right way. You know, like I want to see if this thing powered on. The desktops, most of them didn't power on, so like it was probably like a power supply failure or something. But all the laptops did, which was pretty exciting to me. And then it kind of got super interesting. So um, just a little background, on these stores that I went to, most of them, um, I would say probably 75%, actually made you sign a waiver saying that they were actually going to wipe your stuff, right? So um, they didn't. And I don't know if it was just um, coincidentally that I took the devices that they didn't wipe. I'm going to go ahead and uh, say probably not. Like they probably just don't wipe anything. Um, two out of the 85 devices that I had in total were wiped, where my advanced forensic software cannot gather data off of. And I will go into my advanced forensic software that I use for this in a, in a few slides. <laughs> Three out of the 85 devices were actually encrypted, so I couldn't actually use my advanced software to get data off the drives. The rest were completely open and had data on them. Like I did not find one device that wasn't one of those five that actually didn't have any data. Like what I consider PII, you know, like uh, full docs, social, a passport number maybe. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I could potentially get off. You laugh, but we'll see in a second. Um, so it got really interesting when I was doing this and um, I spent a lot of my own time. Um, granted, my time is probably not that valuable, um, but it gets really, it gets really funny. So, Pi OCR is what I use. It's just Tesseract. Which, if you're not into OCR and like, um, this stuff is actually pretty cool. Um, and one of my other jobs for an insurance company is actually where I use this for the first time. Is we were looking at ways of doing um, data loss prevention in um, identifying like PII and PDFs and images. So I built something around Tesseract, and now some cool guy. Sorry, I can't give the guy credit. I can't remember his name. But Pi OCR and GitHub. Um, is, is Tesseract wrapped in Python. And to look at the image, you just see what happens. So I use regular expressions with Python to look for stuff like, you know, socials, passport numbers, coincidentally, I had to write a regex for that too. And I got lots of stuff. And with advanced techniques learned about in this talk, you can too. Um, we're gonna go into that in a second. But you can see kind of the stats at the bottom. Uh, the images, over 200,000, like I don't even have, I don't think I have one image on my MacBook. I think they're all hosted in like, Google Drive or iCloud or something. So, you know, a time before I could even use a computer, people were using like actual photos stored on the hard drive, which is crazy. Um, but documents, like anything, like any text files, uh, you know, docx, once again, I use Google, I don't even know what a docx is. PDF, CSV, surprisingly, there, was a, there were a few CSVs, and like I thought, you know, just like technical people use CSVs, but apparently normal people do too. And text files, <laughs> RTFs, ODT, I actually had to, I'm not even kidding, I had to Google, I saw ODT, I'm like, I don't, what the, what the hell is this? It's a text file, apparently, it's a, it's a document style. Um, emails too, which was really interesting, like PSTs, just straight up email messages saved from Outlook, really interesting stuff. Um, obviously, I can't go into the specifics of what was in there, 
But people email some crazy shit on their company emails. Like, it's absolutely insane. Um, so don't use your company email for personal stuff. The data continued. Lots of information, once again, just a lot of random stuff. <laughs> Most of the credit card numbers were actually photos taken of the front and back of the card, like legit. Snap a picture of the front of the card, snap a picture of the back of the card, and like send it to your wife or something to buy something. Um, I even got some passport pictures. I got two pictures of passports. Um, they were both expired, um, but you know, it's still interesting. Like, what didn't I find that could potentially be on a computer? And then SSN sent via email or over Messenger. Like MSN Messenger, something I used when I was like, you know, like ten years ago. Actually, they saved their messages and they would like send socials and stuff on there. So using regular expressions and like OCR, if you're familiar with OCR, it's not 100% accurate. Like you have like you know images that are scanned that aren't you know it doesn't do a very good job of scanning them in. Um, you get some discrepancies, but. Overall, like I found this data and actually manually verified it, and this is like the total count. Like, I got email addresses, I got date of births, socials, 41 socials. Can you believe that? On 85 devices, 41 social security numbers. Absolutely, insane. and this wasn't a like uh, you know like a, a computer from my company or a server. This was a personal computer. I found six a whole family's worth of socials on there. So it's pretty insane. Credit card numbers. I bet you, I can't remember the exact, but I think 11 out of the 19 credit card numbers I got were images. Like, they just literally took a picture of the credit card. And then driver's license numbers, which um, I think you can calculate in most states. Um, you, know, you know, it's not very, you know, revealing, but the passport number thing was pretty funny. And sad at the same time. So my advanced machine learning artificially intelligent forensic analysis tool, I'm about to reveal, I'm dropping a zero day right now. All right. You guys ever heard of CCleaner, like the Windows utility? <laughs> I'm dead serious. Like, raise your hand if you've seen CCleaner. Everybody has, right? So the same company that does that, CCleaner, they also have another, and like I said, advanced machine learning, artificially intelligent forensic analysis tool. Let me drop this for you. Recuva, Recuva. I don't even know how to pronounce it. This is what I use, a free piece of software. You know what this software did? It looks in the recycling bin for files. It does nothing. No artifacting, no forensic, intense analysis of any drives was done. It was literally pulling shit out of the recycling bin. And most of this stuff, I didn't have to go in the recycling bin. It was sitting in George Clooney's My Documents or whatever the guy's name was, you know? So there was nothing, there's no techniques. It's literally me going to thrift shops, buying computers that people have donated, trying to do the right thing, and they're just getting absolutely destroyed because I just pulled all their information off of it with literally C Cleaner's brother there, Recuva, Recover, whatever. So it's pretty crazy. So looking at my costs all in, and this is an interesting part that um, I, I kind of went over. So at 600 bucks, plus my family's pain and suffering during the road trip, it is what it is. Um, so you, I'm sure you're all familiar with the dark net. I call it the dark net, you can call it the dark web, the scary place that the TV commercials talk about, whatever. Um, I can't even sell this data on the dark net and get my money back. Like That's how sad this situation is. Data breaches and leaks are so common by companies not doing security correctly, um, people leaving their stuff for losers like me to pick up. That stuff happens every day, and it's actually driven down the price of data on the dark net. I can go get like a batch of socials for like $5 off of any dark net marketplace that you want to go to. And then I lost money in TLDR. I lost money, but I had fun. Um, and then you see my meme there. It would be fun, they said. Nobody actually said it was going to be fun. My fiance, when I told her this, actually thought I was crazy. Um, people at work actually thought, well, how do you have way too much free time on your hands? Um, but then we'll kind of get into how this kind of blew up and <laughs> kind of funny. And then the lessons learned here. Um, and this is, like I said, this is geared more towards non-tech folks. Like, uh, that's kind of where I get, like, you know, the juice is flowing, like doing research for people that maybe don't have access to the technology or the resources we have. So um, donating technology is really nice of you, um, and I very much encourage you to do so, but make sure it's properly wiped first. Um, I wanted to do Thermite up here. They wouldn't let, my company wouldn't let me. Um, I didn't get to ask Mike or anything if I could do it, but they said I couldn't Thermite a drive. So um, even when signing something saying your data is wiped, I couldn't, I wanted to so bad. I fought, I fought the Rapid7 legal team so hard. They would not let me um, put a disclosure up here that you sign when you drop stuff off at some of these places. 
it was clear, you do not need to be a legal expert to know that it literally said on the paper, we will wipe your drive, we will make sure no data remains when someone buys this refurbish. It's, re it's part of the refurbishing product, project or process, sorry. And you can't believe it. Like if, you're, if I'm handing someone anything with my data on it, you cannot trust them to wipe the data. It's like me handing my phone to you and it's not encrypted or anything and expecting you not to look through all my messages. Like it's just, it's, what's common sense to us isn't common sense to everybody else and that's what I'm really trying to depict here. Don't give your stuff away with data on it, especially if it could be potentially sensitive. And if you're that concerned, even if you have a modicum of pause on this, stop what you're doing and drill a hole through your hard drive platter. Use therm don't use thermite. I wanted to, but I, damn it, I can't. But if you're that concerned, remove the hard drive and donate it. Like a hard drive is pretty cheap. And like I said, I'm really conscious of like trying to enable people who wouldn't have like the money or the background to like get into STEM and like get into security specifically. But if you have even a thought, like just just wipe it. Um, I actually want to go back. I had a meme there. Uh, forget what hurt you, but never forgot what it taught you. Um, I want to thank Demisia24 on Tumblr for that quote. And then um, getting kind of the media coverage, this actually blew up, like legit. Like I was on, um, and this isn't me bragging, this is me like just a normal dude. And people are calling me like a, a, a researcher for Rapid7. I got the research team on Rapid7 laughing at me. Josh, I can't believe they're calling you a researcher. Um, it was on Gizmodo. I, I was legit scrolling through Twitter and like people were linking. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like I did this as a blog for Rapid7. The marketing team, like, yeah, Josh, that'll be cool, you know, whatever. It ended up like like the most viewed <laughs> blog for the entire month, beating out like legit real stories. Um, I was on the Washington Post, like I was all over the internet. And I was just seeing my, I had, there was one LinkedIn post, no lie, it was like 1,300 likes shared by a CISO that I worked for like seven years ago. And he like tagged me in it and stuff. He's like, yeah, dude, you wouldn't let me write code because you wanted me to do like risk audits and stuff. And now you're linking my stuff. Yeah, good, feels good, man. But uh, yeah, like people were linking on like the privacy Reddit. I thought it was really interesting because I thought that this was like a dumb project. Like, like I thought I was living in like a different world like where this is a good story. It just seems really weird. Like if you guys are doing actual security research or vulnerability research, like you guys deserve this stuff. I don't, like I just did this in my spare time. Like as a, and I really like this quote here. Brainchild of Josh Franz, <laughs> senior security consultant at Rapid7, who made the project a labor of love on nights and weekends. That's a weird quote, dude. <laughs> but um, it was really cool. Like I was, not famous, obviously not famous, but it was pretty cool to kind of get that out there. Like, this stuff doesn't happen every day um, for normal people that aren't in the tech world. Like, this is stuff that happens. Your tech world, like this. None of you are blown away by this. I guarantee you, none of you are like, oh wow, Josh. Like, <laughs> breaking news, more at eleven. Like, people aren't wiping stuff when they say they are. So it's just really interesting to find out that just people like take pictures of their social security cards and their passports and they just like send them over SMS. Like it's not encrypted, anybody can take it and it, it kind of just like brings me back to reality in this field, if you work in security, of how this stuff happens and it's very interesting to me and how it does. So I just thought it was kind of cool, the media coverage of this guy. And then I just want to thank everybody for listening. I know that we are very close to the bar and like the party and all the fun stuff, and I just wanted to let you know I appreciate you sticking around and listening to me ramble on. Um, just some resources, and like this is, a, I'll tweet it out later to my 200 followers. Um, but PyOCR, I that if you can do a pull request and help them out with their backlog, that'd be great. The regular expressions I use, um, I built them for like credit card numbers, so like Visa, Mastercard, American Express, socials. You can Google or rejects for any of this stuff. Um, I just built them. Um, Recova or Kuva, it's like, again, really funny. Like ccleaner.com, it's actually the website name too. Um, and then sorting files in Python and PowerShell, like, again, not, you know, brain buster kind of things, but um, if it can help you out in any way, you know, it's really cool. And then my GitHub there is um, linked there as well, jfronts one um, dash r7. Um, again, I work for Rapid7, um, you know, Metsvoid, Insight VM, like vulnerability management. Any questions about that, feel free to hit me up too. And then does anyone have any questions um, while we have a few minutes? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. So, so one thing I, I would think would be interesting is that, you know, you took the hard drives out and you put them in, in your device and got the data, right? Um, but it's relatively easy for unencrypted drives to hack into, like, a Windows computer, for example, just by simply, you know, changing some commands and getting in. 
Um, I had to do that at, at one point um, as part of my job to look for a file that we could have recovered. Um, and there's this awesome thing called Chrome Password Manager. I almost wish you would have hacked into these computers to see what kind of passwords you would have found in the password. So, so I, okay, so I. I can't talk too much about it, but I have another talk and another conference I can't talk about yet. But it goes more into detail of the forensics of this. Like, I did more with this stuff, but I, I couldn't, I had to clear with the legal team, it hasn't been 100% cleared yet. But about doing that, none of the path, none of the computers that I went into were locked behind a password. But as far as going in to get like saved passwords, most of these computers were pretty old. I guarantee you, I can't confirm or deny that I did that. But that is a very good point, and that's something that I hope to talk about in another conference. But once again, like I'm bound by my job. I love working for Apple 7. I'm not just saying that. I'm not shill, okay? Um, but I have to keep my job to pay my bills. So, I, I, But that is a very good question and a very good point. Someone, You had a question, right? Yeah, go ahead. So without Thermite, what is the best way to wipe a drive? Because it's my understanding DBAN is free-ish, mm -hmm. and it's for spinning disks only. Uh, but not solid state disk. Yeah, I, I wanted to put this. I wanted to put it in there in the in the blog that I did. I had like a whole section on um, how to destroy drives. There's software. I can't remember the name of it. If anybody knows for solid state drives, like I recommend DBAN um, for mechanical drives. But there's another software for solid state drives that works really well. Um, honestly, though, like I'm not a forensic expert. If any forensic expert is in the crowd, please tell me to stop talking. But I would be skeptical of any way that I could 100% erase a solid state or mechanical drive. So I would err on the side of caution and physically destroy it with thermite. Wish, again, wish I could show you that. I also don't know what thermite looks like, smells like, or does. But I just saw it on the internet and had a video on it. Um, but physical destruction, um, I used to work at a manufacturing company called John Deere. You might know them. Um, they had giant shredders like for e-waste and stuff, so that was cool to throw stuff into. Um, but a drill press or like a drill, I think that again, forensic experts, please. Um, even drilling, like if you don't drill the correct area, the platter or something, like you can recover it or something. It's crazy. I don't know. Burn it with thermite. Drill it into oblivion. Shred it. Shred the shit as much as you can. Hammer, yeah, hammer. Destroy physical destruction. Physical destruction. Hammer, um, a really good way um, to relieve some stress too. Um, so, if you're sad about your life, go to a thrift store, buy some hard drives, smash them up, and think of me when you do that. Thank you very much, everybody. If you want to, you know, get with me, connect with me about this research project or anything else Rapid7 related. Um, I don't work in sales or anything. I'm a consultant, so I can't get you the price discounts you want. Um, but just let me know, and thanks for hearing my inane ramblings. Thank you very much.